time to say goodbye to the beloved characters of Greasy Mellow as they figure out what their lives are like now that Giant Hotel is no longer their enemy, but their new home. At least, it's a new home for some of them, since SAE Wu's parents will need extra special persuasion to let their daughter, and the rest of their staff, join Poong in the kitchen. Episodes 34-38 WECAP Poong tucks the exhausted SAE Wu into bed and starts to unbutton her chef's coat. SAE Wu sleepily asks if it's a dream, but Poong reassures her it's definitely real, then says, sleep with me. She seems to nod assent, but as he leans in for a kiss, he discovers that she was just nodding off to sleep. He lets her sleep, but has to go to the kitchen to gulp down a glass of ice water. Might be better to just pour that over your head, buddy. Poong steps outside for some fresh air and sees SAE Wu's father arrive at the hotel. He introduces himself, and Dad asks where SAE Wu is. Poong awkwardly explains she's in the night duty room and Dad insists on seeing his daughter. Poong takes him upstairs, but in the time that Poong left the room, SAE Wu sleepily undressed herself. Poong hurries to cover her up, but Dad's suspicious that there was some hanky-panky despite Poong's insistence that nothing happened, not the best first impression, but Poong takes Dad to the hotel kitchen and explains that it's a difficult environment for a woman and he originally didn't want her to work there, either. But SAE Wu shows great potential and determination as a chef. She enjoys working with a wok, so it would be a shame for people to miss out on the love and care she puts into her food. As Dad imagines SAE Wu working, he explains that the only reason SAE Wu joined the kitchen staff was because he went to jail, so he feels protective of his daughter. He's also concerned that both SAE Wu and Poong are recently divorced yet pursuing a relationship together. Poong says that it's hard work, but it's something SAE Wu really wants to do, and asks Dad to let her stay a little longer. He's not just talking about the kitchen, is he? Chiel Sung goes to the hospital to visit Gum Granny. She tells him to leave, but he stubbornly sticks around, making himself comfortable in the spare bed next to her. Gum Granny explains that she couldn't tell him about the cancer because it would make her feel guilty, having abandoned him as a child only to have him realize she'll be dying soon. She hid it so that she could still enjoy being around him as Gum Granny and not his sick mother. She admits that discovering he became a gangster broke her heart and wonders if he can find a way to stop being a loan shark. Gum Granny promises that in her next life, she'll do nothing except look after him, and he can be the one who leaves her at a Chinese restaurant. She won't blame him for his heartlessness. Chiel Sung turns away so she can't see the tears in his eyes as she says that she doesn't deserve Chiel Sung's forgiveness. In the morning, Young Hai wonders why S.A.E. Wu isn't at the breakfast table, and Dad awkwardly says that S.A.E. Wu had to leave early, covering up the fact that S.A.E. Wu slept over at the hotel last night. Sol Ya serves breakfast and launches into an enthusiastic explanation of how she and G.O.K. Young can make sure they can do their household work while also working at the hotel, but Young Hai refuses to listen. Poon wanders the empty, small hungry wok kitchen as S.A.E. Wu arrives at the hotel kitchen early to practice for the new day. Sam's son also arrives early and immediately starts ordering her around, but he gives her tasks that are difficult for even more experienced chefs. Poon puts up signs telling everyone that Hungry Wok is closed, much to the disappointment of a boy and his father who came there specifically because they heard it had the best jajangmyeon. Poon decides to open up the kitchen once more just for them and prepares their meal. He tells them that they can head to the hotel next time since he plans to serve the same food there, but the father is worried about the cost since fancy hotels are notorious for being expensive. Chiel Sung stops by a convenience store, at the same time as veterinarian is there. Her credit card isn't working, and Chiel Sung offers to pay for her items. He reveals that he actually remembers her this time. Ms. Veterinarian points out that they keep running into each other, if it happens again, she'll think it's fate. Poon calls SAE Wu over to Hungry Wok so he could make her breakfast without the hotel staff finding out about their relationship, but he wonders if there's a way to keep Hungry Wok open. He also tells her that he met her father last night, who, despite being nicer than her mother, was more intimidating. SAE Wu insists that if her family really knew Poon, they wouldn't be so against him. Poon takes his precious ladle and wok and realizes that he originally had left Giant Hotel to seek his revenge and destroy it, but now he's returning with the hopes of having more people enjoy his food. 
His mission is to make it accessible so that anyone, regardless of their status or wealth, will be able to eat there. He informs his staff that starting tomorrow, they'll be serving any dish that the customers want, such as jajangmyeon, and they'll sell it for the same price as the local restaurants. There's some pushback since this means they'll only be making a fraction of money they used to charge the VIP clients, plus the other chefs want to make more gourmet dishes than mere comfort food. Sam's son is especially adamant that they'll lose their reputation and VIP clients, and refuses to do it. Poong retorts that it doesn't matter if you're a chef in a fancy hotel or a cook at a cheap restaurant, what matters is serving food that people want to eat. Poong explains that they'll make up the price difference in volume since more people will want to eat there. Sung Ryong is a broken, drunken mess after losing everything, and I couldn't be happier as he falls into a table after attempting to punch Cheol Sung. He accuses Cheol Sung of being a mere loan shark and gangster, but Cheol Sung says that he's giving all that up for his mother. Or Poong and SAE Wu have a cute conversation where they're on the phone with each other, but standing at opposite ends of the kitchen. SAE Wu says she wishes she knew how to change her family's perception of him, and Poong confesses that it hurts him whenever Samsung scolds her while she's working. SAE Wu's parents have gotten into Poong's head, though, and he's worried that he'll never be good enough for her. SAE Wu retorts that her parents are worried because she's not good enough and they want someone to cover up her faults. She reassures Poong that she won't let her family separate them. Cheol Sung catches Ma Rain Dal trying to peel off the money that's papered on Hungry Wok's walls. Ma Rain Dal says they're short on money to purchase Giant Hotel in the public auction, so they could use the million won that's just being used as decoration. But Cheol Sung tells him to leave it, this money has another purpose. People have noticed the sign Poong put up, directing people to the hotel if they want their usual Hungry Wok Jajang Mayan and other food. However, most of the original hotel kitchen staff haven't shown up to work due to their refusal to make Poon's simple dishes. The orders start rolling in at an overwhelming rate, and most people are ordering Jajangmyeon. Poon's crew may be small, but they're willing to work hard, and Poon barks out orders as he grabs a wok and starts cooking. SAE Wu is proving extra useful as she anticipates Poon's needs. They're deep into the lunch rush when Young Hai arrives and asks to speak to the chef. Poong is like, now, really, and then you can practically see his heart leap into his throat when he realizes who it is. Young Hai is determined to take Sae Wu home, and she'll use force if she has to. She says that Poong must not really love Sae Wu if he so willingly lets Sae Wu perform difficult kitchen work. Whatever, mom. But she manages to persuade Poong, who orders Sae Wu to leave. SAE Wu doesn't understand why he'd want her to go home in the middle of lunch rush when she's the only one besides him at the walk station. Poong insists that he doesn't need her and that she should go home with her mother. Later, Ma Rain Dal tells Sol Yar and Geok Young that Poong and the rest of the remaining kitchen staff only made it through the day by the skin of their teeth. With so many staff gone, they were barely able to get orders out and some tables weren't able to keep waiting for their meals. R. Aindel worries that they'll lose their loyal customers if things keep going like this, and begs Sol Yar and Geok Young to come back to work. Instead of going home with her mother, Sae Wu finally visits Buster. Yay! She takes the bus back into town and calls Poong, telling him to meet her at the bus stop. She demands to know if Poong is going to break up with her because her mother told him to. Sae Wu wonders what will happen when she goes back to the kitchen tomorrow or the day after or the day after that. Realizing that Poong would try to make her go home again, she decides to break up with him. She doesn't want to date someone who would rather try to